Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the big news today. This is ClarkMooney.com, and you can see we have the trading halt at Mt. Gox. The trading is halted on Mt. Gox until 4-12-2013, 2 a.m. UTC, to allow the market to cool down following the drop in price. Read more details on the support. Additionally, trading fees will not be charged within 48 hours of trading, resuming, uh, etc. So, fascinating. Uh, I don't know why Mt. Gox did this. Uh, there's a lot of speculation. Of course, uh, I've pointed out in the last number of episodes, that, uh, and Mike, Max Kaiser has pointed out as well, that uh, we need more exchanges. Of course, none of the action on the exchanges has anything to do with vulnerability of the Bitcoin itself. Um, the exchanges have received a lot of DDoS attacks. Uh, there's a lot of FUD, distortion, nonsense. We're going to see that when we look at uh, Tyler Durden trying to uh, spread a bunch of nonsense about the Bitcoin. And it's really sad. In fact, it's exciting to see such an array of enemies. Uh, even the people that you would think would be allies have turned out to be enemies. But then again, uh, uh, people who uh, fight against uh, uh, an idea whose time has come are people ultimately who are kicking against the bricks. And of course, you kick against the bricks, you're just going to end up with a broken toe. So uh, the UTC time is going to be 2 a.m. You can see here, current time UTC is 12.01 a.m. So we're talking about uh, about two hours from now. So uh, there's a lot of speculation as to why uh, Mt. Gox decided to, what it, uh, to do what it did. doesn't really matter to me, and it probably doesn't really matter to anybody who's a serious investor in Bitcoins, because as I said before, I have no intention whatsoever of selling my Bitcoins for any currency ever again, uh, forever. Uh, so, uh, and that'll get to a lot of the specious arguments in this uh, uh, article. But uh, let's look first at the uh, Bitcoin channel. And uh, you can see here, I've stickied at the top of the channel here uh, a link from uh, VidStatsX. And you can see this is a chart of the 90 day subscriber growth in the Bitcoin channel. You can see that it's beginning to go parabolic. The top line, of course, is the subscribers per day. The lower uh, blue is the number of subs. So if this is any indication of the interest in the Bitcoin, which I think it really is, uh, then, of course, uh, this thing is just starting to take off. Uh, you can see also uh, we've got 30 online and uh, we've gotten 155 subs today. Uh, we have about four more hours left, so this will be a, another record in uh, subs. Uh, but let's uh, go look at the latest story here on Zero Hedge. Now, this is fascinating for a number of reasons, uh, specifically the, the FUD that's involved, but also the outright deception, which I'm really surprised at. So let's click on this story and uh, take a look. Uh, this is... Winklevoss twins revealed as owning 1% of all Bitcoins. Think the 75% plunge in Bitcoin values in two days has crushed all former supporters of the virtual currency, which truth be told is only back to levels from a month ago. Wrong. Okay, so that's wrong and wrong. Let's expose this uh, creative... Uh, uh, press here. Uh, look at this chart that we have here. This is a chart. I'll show you very carefully here. This is a chart from uh, bitcoincharts.com. You can see that UTC bitcoincharts.com and it's the daily chart. You can see the date April 11th and you can see here on this chart that uh, we have a drop Apparently, that's where he gets 75%. We have a drop 
to about $30. That would be the last uh, high that we saw. Now, what's so fascinating about this is if we go over to BitcoinCharts.com and you can look at the exact same chart. You can see I'm at BitcoinCharts.com. I'm on the daily chart. And uh, for all intents and purposes, this is the identical chart. But you notice something about Tyler's chart? Tyler's chart goes down to 30. But the chart that's on BitcoinCharts.com goes down to 110. Why is that, Tyler? Where'd you get this chart from? That's kind of strange. So let's go over to Clark Moody. Now we can see uh, Clark Moody was halted. The last trading price was 124, 125. But you can see here when we put our line here, we've got 110 as the low. So let's go back. Here's the real chart. Let's do a refresh just so you can see. Here's a refresh of the real chart that's on BitcoinCharts.com. We've got a bottom at 110. We've got a bottom at 110 on Clark Moody. But for some strange reason, we've got a crash all the way down to 30 on uh, Tyler Durden's chart. Hmm. Makes you wonder. So let's keep reading. Think the 75% plunge in Bitcoin values in two days has crushed all firmer supporters of the virtual currency, which, truth be told, is only back to levels from a month ago? No, it's actually back to levels from a week ago. Wrong. As the New York Times reports, a very unexpected supporting gene pool split into two identical halves has emerged in the shape of two names previously linked to yet another pre-bubble frenzy name, Facebook. Oh, okay, so here's a little bit of... Uh, smearing FUD. Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, selectively the Winklevi, following stints at Olymp as Olympic ro rowers, Simpsons characters, and antagonistic Facebook litigants. The two 31-year-old identical twins are now indirect investors in the latest currency, quote-unquote, craze, whose heyday may well have come and gone. Oh, may well have come and gone. Looks like uh, we can see where Tyler's trying to go. Courtesy of owning a whopping 1% stake in all the entire outstanding supply of Bitcoin, which at last count was worth $1.3 billion, if maybe a little bit less now. Snark. So there they are. And here's a quote from the New York Times. An array of speculators have now bid up the price of the Bitcoin to the point where the outstanding supply of the digital money was worth $1.3 billion at last count. The Winklevi, as they are popularly known, say they own nearly 1% of that or some $11 million. The decision by the brothers to go public with their position signals a new stage for what has been an experimental alternative to national currencies created in 2009 by a programmer or programmers known only by a pseudonym. The Bitcoin world has been dominated by anonymous programmers and traders. And uh, again, uh, what's wrong with anonymous? Uh, apparently, they're very threatened by anonymity, something I value very highly. Continuing, the six foot five Winklevi were unfazed by the latest tumult. Indeed, the brothers said they used the low prices to buy more. They argue that Bitcoin will have much further to soar once a broader audience sees its virtues. I absolutely agree with that statement a unit of exchange that can be moved around the world at the click of a button without requiring any payments to western union or american express quote people say it's a ponzi scheme it's a bubble said cameron winklevoss people really don't want to take it seriously at some point that narrative will shift to virtual currencies are here to stay were in the early days. I could not agree more. The brothers began dabbling in Bitcoin last summer when the dollar value of a single coin was still in the single digits. In addition to the purchase of the Bitcoins, they also say they have invested in a Bitcoin-related company but declined to disclose which one. The currency itself exists as a string of letters and numbers. Well, you could say that about uh, any kind of cryptography. Of course, it's a string of letters and numbers. That has nothing to do with it. The point is, is that uh, it it's uh, it cannot be guessed at. It cannot be broken. So uh, here's uh, cryptography 101. In order to keep their holdings secure from hackers, they've taken those codes off network computers and saved them 
on small flash drives. They said they have put the drives in safe deposit boxes at banks in three different cities. So uh, there's some more FUD nonsense. Uh, you don't have to have uh, a bunch of safe deposit boxes. Uh, you can zip up your wallet. You can encrypt your wallet. Uh, the size of a wallet that contains a million bitcoins, uh, well, that's 10%. So uh, whatever their 1% is, I guess that would be 110,000 bitcoins, roughly. Um, the size of that wallet probably could be sent in an email. Uh, so there's no need to... Uh, do all these things uh, the vulnerability is going to be any one of the wallets if any of the one of the wallets and the, again there can be an infinite number of copies of that wallet if any of those wallets is compromised if a copy of that wallet is opened and then the bitcoins are sent in the network then that's it that's end of story so you want to have multiple copies of your wallets, but even more importantly than that, you want to have strong encrypted passwords protecting those. Only a password that you know, and I guess uh, maybe your heirs. Nothing like having a string of letters and numbers in safes, in flash drives, in three cities as a store of value. So you can see the snarkiness continuing to some more cynically inclined observers for the two brothers who lately have been desperate to get back in the public arena this latest investment is nothing but a rather expensive PR campaign so here we go here's more FUD more distortion more distraction so the Bitcoin is just a PR campaign for some Facebook guys and one which depending on their cost basis may have already proven to be a huge loss well, no, we already were told that they bought in the single digits. Uh, we've got Tyler's fake chart. We still don't know where he got that chart. Uh, but even if his fake chart is right, uh, we know that uh, they're up 300%, uh, 200% because they bought in at single digits. And this chart shows 30 is the low. So has to make you wonder. However, that will not stop them or many others desperate to ride on the coattails of the next parabolic bubble you gotta wonder who's paying these people other silicon valley venture firms while not holding bitcoins are starting to show interest in the technology tim draper of the firm draper fisher jervitson put money into coin lab which is doing bitcoin related projects trebecca venture partners announced this week that it was putting money into coin setter a startup trading platform for the currency sadly a somewhat notable problem with bitcoin the currency and not the bubblicious asset is that one can't really use it for much other than to buy more bitcoin now that has got to be one of the dumbest statements that i've ever heard obviously you cannot buy bitcoin with bitcoin so perhaps that's a reference to speculating on the price of Bitcoin and bouncing in and out of dollars and Bitcoins to come back and try to get more Bitcoin. But uh, so that is just outright stupid comment on its face. But secondly, uh, it's outright false because there are thousands of businesses coming online every day that uh, are doing business in Bitcoin so this is like the uh, Chris Duane time machine back to 2011 where every bogus argument that can be found from a couple years ago that's already been discredited is pulled out so Tyler is definitely sunk to a new low you have to wonder or convert it into fiat currencies the same fiat currencies that Bitcoin is trying to replace so let's do a little thought experiment here let's take the word Bitcoin and let's replace the word Bitcoin with the word gold and uh, see if the argument stands sadly a somewhat notable problem with gold the currency and not the bubblicious asset is that one can't really use it for much other than to buy more gold or convert it into fiat currencies 
the same fiat currencies that gold is trying to replace. So I think you can see the silliness of this statement. Obviously, people who buy gold, uh, myself included, uh, many don't intend to convert them back to the current fiat currency, but perhaps a future fiat currency or maybe bitcoins. But certainly, uh, those who have invested in gold since 2000 have uh, made uh, six or seven fold fiat currency profits. So if this criticism is valid against Bitcoin, then it certainly has to be valid against gold. And of course, it's no criticism at all, really. So far, few real companies accept Bitcoins as payment. The primary place that can be used is an online bazaar known as the Silk Road. So here we go again. Here's our uh, drug dealer uh, nonsense, as I pointed out many, many times. Uh, obviously, uh, the drug dealing and money laundering that's going on in the world is being done by the governments of the world. There's no question about that, uh, that Tyler Durden would buy into some nonsensical argument that just goes to show you uh, either how compromised or how stupid the people who are uh, on this blog, which uh, really, um, to me, to be perfectly honest with you, it looks like that they're just sinking their own boat here. They're just uh, willing to go down with the ship and uh, Zero Hedge will be completely discredited and become uh, just uh, irrelevant. But uh, so to make this Silk Road argument again, that's nonsense. Uh, I've never even fired up a Tor client. I wouldn't know how to get to Silk Road if you told me how. And again, this whole Silk Road argument that someone's going to order drugs online. Well, you could just as easily order drugs online and pay for them with dollars. Uh, the point is, is that if you're having drugs delivered to a physical dress, you're a moron uh, uh, because you're committing a crime and you're giving your address. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the Bitcoin, but uh, this is more FUD. Uh, from the Fudsters, where narcotics are the main wares for sale, but the currency's believers see a future in which Starbucks and Amazon take Bitcoins. For their part, the Winklevoss twins have used some of their Bitcoin to pay for the services of a Ukrainian computer programmer who has worked on the site of their venture capital firm. Hmm. Maybe the Ukrainian guy behind this blog is a little bit worried about that Ukrainian guy. But the drop-dead punchline, quote, We have elected to put our money and faith in a mathematical framework that is free of politics and human error, Tyler Winklevoss said. That's funny. It's more or less what the heads of the Federal Reserve and all other central banks have said for the past 100 years. I... Do you know what he's talking about? I... I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, it's almost like he's completely lost his mind. Um, to compare putting your trust in the Bitcoin to putting your trust in central banks, uh, putting your trust in central banks is putting your trust in the restraint of a particular individual from printing fiat currency. We know that Ben Bernanke, who is basically the enemy of all humanity who has decided to subsidize and you can go to uh, Zero Hedge and read an article today from Jim Quinn about the boondoggles going on in Philadelphia that are ultimately subsidized by Ben Bernanke and the money printers that uh, Tyler Durden uh, I don't know uh, apparently it's kind of like the end of the movie where he shoots himself in the head with a gun. As for the future of Bitcoin, well, if its credibility can survive a collapse like this, and here we get our fake zero hedge chart. <laughs> Maybe it does have staying power, unless, of course, the other sizable investors are none other than the central banks the currency hopes to supplant, just biding their time until they launch the next avalanche sell-off. So here's a hint here that it might be the central banks who bought up all the bitcoins and then sold them all off. Of course, uh, I've shown you that's not going to be the case because you can look at my channel and the growth. And as I mentioned last night, uh, one bitcoin for 11 million people and that's it. Uh, that's the whole game. Game over.
So an incredible uh, amount of FUD and distortion nonsense and seemingly at least outright lies from Zero Hedge. Shocking to say the least, but that's not surprising. That shows you the extent of the threat. That shows you the absolute terror that the Bitcoin uh, puts into the hearts of the powers that be, the Illuminati, the central bankers, the prostitute, prostitute press, the secondary uh, prostitute press. Uh, you can see that all these folks are absolutely terrified of the Bitcoin. Now, I wanted to address an issue here, and uh, we're going to pull up a gold uh, chart. We look at this, and uh, actually, we'll just pull up a, a gold image here. And uh, so, I wanted to compare uh, gold and the Bitcoin briefly because we've talked about this intrinsic value I've had this debate this debate is going on on my channel on uh, my blog the forums and many have claimed that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value and this argument has been bandied about that uh, the, the reason why the Bitcoin is inferior to gold is it has no intrinsic value so what I propose to do is that we should uh, make a thought experiment uh, about Bitcoin and gold. So my argument is that the Bitcoin actually does have an intrinsic value that's different than its value as currency. Now you may or may not accept that, but my argument is that the Bitcoin's value that is intrinsic is the ability to defeat capital controls. And that value is actually not directly tied to its value as currency. They're actually two different values. They're connected together, but uh, fundamentally and uh, theoretically they're different. So let's do this thought experiment so we can see this difference. Now imagine that if today uh, some amazing inventor invented a machine that allowed you to teleport gold anywhere on the earth that you chose to. So as uh, let's say this machine in this thought experiment was a machine that you're able to print out with your 3D printer. So virtually everyone in the world who had access to that or could buy that from someone who had access to that had the ability to print out this teleport machine. And this machine had the ability to teleport gold anywhere in the world between two parties. It could send and receive gold. It had two little chambers, the send chamber and the receive chamber. Uh, as soon as you hit the button on that send chamber, that would take that ounce of gold and send it to the other party anywhere else in the world that you chose that you were doing business with. Now, let's also say that uh, half of the gold in the world has a particular atomic characteristic that it's able to be teleported through this machine, whereas the rest of the gold in the world is just ordinary gold. It can't be. Now, in this thought experiment, what would you say would be the value of the gold that could be teleported using this machine as opposed to the value of the gold that could not be teleported using this machine? Now, remember, both of these are currency. So we're talking about the intrinsic value. They both hold that intrinsic value that gold has that intrinsic value of being made into jewelry or as others have cited its beauty its durability the fact that it doesn't rust both of these units of gold uh, have that ability but one of them has the ability to be used in this machine which can teleport it anywhere on the earth uh, back and forth between anonymous individuals so imagine a free market between these two forms of gold what would the value be of the form of gold that had the ability to be teleported anywhere in the world and what would the value of the gold be that was just a store of wealth but could not be moved across borders so I challenge you to think about that I think you would probably conclude that the gold that could be teleported would be many many multiples in value of the gold that could not be teleported as we've seen recently the Italian arrested at the border who was strip searched his gold was taken so uh, my proposition is with this thought experiment, I think 
I can prove that Bitcoin actually has an intrinsic value. And that intrinsic value is the ability to defeat capital controls, exchange controls. And that is actually something separate from its currency value. Now, if you're going to argue that it's inherent in its currency value, then I'm afraid you're going to have to argue that its currency value is higher than the value of gold. And we'll talk to you next time.